Hi, it's time for a little help. I'm Tommy, and this is Hi, I'm Ben. ben. Yeah. We are going to talk through a few uh, Ableton Live tricks today for today's uh, Little Help. Little Help is a segment or a show where we kind of talk through different tips and tricks in music production and uh, occasionally hear things uh, from the audience too. So today we're going to be looking at some tips and tricks in Ableton. Uh, ben is kind of the Ableton master today. He has the, the driver's seat. So That's I'm just right. going to kind of... Uh, keep an eye on the chat and talk to y'all as we go. If you have any questions, but I want to uh, I want to kind of uh, I want to kind of uh, prime the audience a little bit. So what All do right. we have? Uh, what do we have that we're going to be looking at today? So those of us who were hanging out last week, oh, in our floating there we couch. Are. Let's just fix that up real quick. Perfect. Um, so if you were hanging out with us last week, uh, Jake and I went over kind of the interface of Ableton. Um, we have quite a few sections that we covered. We talked about um, DAWs in general. Um, I need to bring up a chat myself. I need to see who's, who's here. Who's hanging? Um, but, of course, if you were hanging out with us last week, I would love to kind of go over maybe just a sweet little overview of what this DAW does and how it does those things. So... Let's do something like hiding each of these panels. So in the corner of each of these screens, we can actually show and hide our large panels. This is the session view. And if you click up here in the top right, you'll find yourself a top view or a timeline view. Yeah. So this is um, really the format that people are going to be most familiar with. Um, when looking at a spreadsheet-like audio <laughs> tool, um, you can see here that it's picking up my microphone off of my laptop as an input. Um, and I can show you that by, if I go to Preferences, which might be in Edit, or might be under Live. Good old, good old Mac OS, doing your thing. So you can see here, this is what we're using to get to you guys, HDMI as an output and our input devices right there are built in microphone if you have an audio interface for your computer you will probably see other devices in there that's totally realistic if that thing is not working for example maybe I don't want to watch this little meter go up and down I'll go through and change my inco input configuration disable that so this will not allow me to record any audio but it's a nice little thing to know in case you have something plugged in and you're not sure why these things are grayed out or maybe I can't record for some reason. It's not allowing me to stick this into the red position. I cannot arm a track if I do not have an input device selected. Very, very well. There are other types of audio drivers. Depending on the system, we're just going to walk through the menu and talk about every little thing. Our sample rate, um, whether we do pitch conversion at a particular, with a particular amount of memory. Um, the latency options, which you kind of have to toy around with, but generally, you know, fewer samples is a faster input. If you're recording something live, maybe you'll sacrifice the playback quality for a faster response from your instrument. Um, and of course, everyone's favorite, the test tone. So what it will do here is allow us to simulate what our usage is. It changes that meter up here in the top right. Um, if you press backspace on any selected field, it'll reset. And we can also change the volume and frequency of this tone. So if, so if you buy like a pair of headphones or speakers off of somebody and they're like, dude, dude, the frequency response on this sub is crazy. <laughs> we can do this and drop it all the way down to see what the real response is using the sign test tone. So the TV that I'm listening to this output on right now starts to really fall off at about 100 hertz. If I turn up the, the volume a bit, we might get a little more of that back, but it seems like just above low E on the guitar is where we're going to have, um, where we're going to have our um, fall off. So anything that we're working on here, 
I mean, the stream is going to experience it differently, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening on a system that has like a mega subwoofer, I've had a system that will be able to, you know, give you a pretty good sound at 25 hertz, which is stupid low. Um, let's see, other options. Of course, changing languages and follow behaviors and all these things. And I kind of like to come across more of these settings um, as we go, because I've changed a lot of them over the years. My default um, Ableton setup has some tracks that you might not recognize in your own default profile. And that's in, um, I think it's file folder. You can make adjustments to any set and save that current set as what Ableton looks like when you open it up. And that's very useful if you have a particular arrangement of hardware or software, you're like, oh, I want to start with this piano and I want to have those plugins just ready to go because that's what I'm using right now. Um, very useful. Also linking out to other applications, scratch disk space, making sure plugins are all where they're supposed to be. All of that we can configure in here. And for those of you who believe in shortcut keys, which I certainly do, that's a command comma or control comma, I even believe, on Windows to jump right into that menu. So we covered our places in Ableton Live. Um, here you can add folders from your computer. This grayed out folder points to an external hard drive. So when it's not plugged in, I can't select anything in front, inside of it. Um, desktop, documents, other places on my computer, and inside of my project. Live 8 library for those Live, live 8 transfer students. <laughs> um, we actually do get a lot of those templates back. Um, I'm partial specifically to some of the old audio effect rack presets, um, like mastering and oh. performance and DJ. Like this stuff, you know, it reconfigures existing um, elements that we have, like it within audio effects, and we can kind of get into the detail of those things. But some of these things are very useful if you're just like, oh, yeah, I really like, you know, vintage mastering or simple chain, something that'll kind of round out your sound at the end of a little session. So very quick presets just to make something listenable before you give it sure. to somebody else. Um, but let's live over here. I don't even know what the name of this panel is. And that's okay because there's another panel. If you look at this right next to our little logo down here um, is the help panel. And so if this arrow is pointing to the right, it's hidden or up, show and hide info view. So now, I mean, it's basically gonna be like a PowerPoint presentation and I can kind of read what this thing is telling you. Um, the info view is great. You can actually add notes to Ableton presets that That's show really up cool. in the info view. If you have a particular like rack and we'll get into racks, maybe this week, maybe next week. Holy crap. Ableton and also has- uh, We've been hacked. No, I'm oh, just kidding. No. Ableton also has a ton of um, really neat like tutorials that kind of pop out right bar mm. sort of like step-by-step -step tutorial Ooh, there we are yeah video and is that yeah, in fun. the project manager view i usually get it over at help help this and, guy mm, i think help view let me see what's that guy yeah. yeah there it is so this actually gives you a ton of lessons that if you are just getting started with ableton will teach you a lot of the interesting things about this program. Because unlike other DAWs, it has this view. And then when you tab over to this view, it's like a totally different experience. And this is, um, I forget which one is session view and which one is. So this is, actually there should be, if we use our buddy over here. Yeah, what's this called? Our helper buddy. So we have arrangement view Got and it. session view. Yeah, so session view is really interesting because session view is, um, really oriented towards like mixing and matching audio or snippets of different loops and stuff. Yeah. Just absolutely normal. So, yeah. What um, that does Ableton uh, that is not a feature of Ableton Live 9. Yeah. Um that is a feature of a very complicated and strange signal path. But with uh with session view, I use that a lot for DJing. Yeah. And then the arrangement view is more like, oh, I've got to actually commit this to something that has form or uh, uh you know, et cetera. And um it actually is like a really interesting thing to use. You see those uh grid controllers that a lot of people use where they're triggering individual samples when they're playing live, that sort of thing. 
right. uh, that's really relying on Ableton's session view in particular. So, well, and that's also a thing that um, there's actually a lot of good interplay between the two. If you're yeah. taking like a session that you've set up with a bunch of different clips and kind of different grooves that are stacked on each other, and then you can select all of those objects yeah. and throw them into the arrangement or vice versa. No, I, um, I go back and forth a lot with yeah. with both views, really. And session view is also kind of great for like when you uh, want to organize the assets you plan to use in the other view. <laughs> I'm starting to believe that it is my fault. Well, let's see what happens. Hmm. Believe in yourself. There we go. Believe. If I could just get everyone in the audience to believe. Yeah. In Ableton Live, reappearing. You got to believe. I believe in fairies. There it Sweet. is. Sweet. We've returned somehow. I love how totally, you know, ultimately that is my fault. Remember, guys, check your lines. So, have you heard the, uh, the, there's some, the, the demo files that come with Ableton? Uh, no. Let's check them out. All right. So, let's make sure that that is fixed. I want to play my little loop just to double check audio. Sweet. All right, so that works just fine. Now, I can't remember where exactly they are. Ooh, look. It's like a short overview of what we were actually looking at. But I know from previous research um, they are able to in. If I look for inside of your applications folder, if you show package contents in this guy, I guess I have to sneak it over to that desktop. Boop. So right here, there are do, 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 do resources. And then if I'm not mistaken, there are tutorial or demo projects. Um, do, 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 do. Where the heck are these guys? Push to frameworks, built-in lessons. So these are the things that are linked to in the window itself, these guys, um, are the resources for those files. I'm trying to find, maybe I'll just kind of tuck my thing back down here while I do a quick little search for that and we can talk about other elements of the interface. So I've already mentioned these little arrows for hiding and showing the info. And this is very useful for, oh, yeah, what is that exactly? The name of the clip, the, mm -hmm. you know, where the file is. Yeah. Um, inside of our preferences, we actually linked up, like, I have Audacity as my mm -hmm. WAV file editor. Ah. So when I click edit for a sample, it will bring up that tool set on this other screen because, hey, you know, why not? And then you work on some destructive editing right. here, change the file, and... Voila. Save it, and it's back in Ableton updated? Yes. Cool. I'm not going to save those changes right now. The weird thing is that Ableton will collect your resources when you save a file. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it'll save in a weird location. Yeah. And, you know, maybe maybe you don't want that. Another thing that we can do, like, what is this guy, right? The Groove Browser? Mm -hmm. The Groove Pool will go to a specific section inside of your library that has, like, kind of click tracks. Mm -hmm. Um we should be able to preview. I have my my preview thing a little bit low, but where are, I don't know, like an MPC groove or something like that. Basically what it'll do is adjust the timing. If I drag that over to a clip, it'll show up into the pool, it'll show up in the pool, and it'll change the rhythmic quality wow. of our loop, which is super useful, especially when you have something that is like on the block, or but see how it kind of like skips way, way out now? Versus if I disable this, so now it's yeah. very straight. Um, and we have lots of groove options. You can actually create your own grooves as well. Um, and you can do that from any existing loop, anything that's on time or you know in the, in a key that you like, anything that loops well or in in the period that you like, you can right click 
and press extract grooves. Boom. Oh, cool. And so what that'll do is it'll take the warp markers from that, like all of these little gray dots here uh, that are right above the waveform. It'll analyze those warp markers, and you can apply that setting, like those transients, to another fu to another sound. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes useful, sometimes not, but it's always fun. Um, so now I have another setting, and I can actually put this into, let's say, my own file of grooves. Uh, or is there like a new folder button? I'm not quite sure. Or maybe in the user library. Hey, dope. Get over here, black groove. You rock. So that's absolutely brilliant. Instead of dragging and dropping, you can click on this little, like, it looks like a little floppy disk. For those of you who know what, you know, a floppy disk is, <laughs> that's where this image comes from. And clicking that will also do the same thing. Um, likewise, Ableton is loaded with a lot of redundant um, user interface um, items. So, for example, if I want to change the groove here, there's this little hot swap button. And you can hot swap grooves, you can hot swap samples. Um, there are probably other things you can hot swap, like settings, I'm not quite sure, but envelopes. And so what I'll do is it'll turn your browser orange, and we can preview each of these settings in real time. So if I want to, you know, press enter to throw that guy in. Now we have a very weird, if not choppy, version of that timing setting. Let's get that right. Or we can just switch in another one, Congress 2. And so that's going to hot swap out that location to whatever the heck we want it to be. Close it. I don't even want to use grooves. <laughs> I just wanted to show you how they work. Cool. So, yep. That is a quite useful thing. Um, I don't know if I have questions for any of these people. Are there any questions from the audience? Or is there anything you'd like to see us try to do real quick from scratch? Oh, like, sure. Like, if the audience doesn't suggest something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull something out and just say, let's, let's start from zero to, like, hip-hop beat. Oh, or no something problem. Something like that. Uh, but maybe someone in the audience would like to see something else in Ableton. So if you guys in the chat have anything you'd like to see or a little tip or trick you'd like uh, some guidance on, maybe somebody has a DJ set to prep and they're like, I don't know how work <laughs> markers work. Uh, let us know. Uh, feed into the chat. Let us know if you have any questions right now. Uh, I'm really liking Daimo Muisk's like, like great <laughs> uh, commentary here. Like Sick Triangle Chimes wants to make a cover of One Winged Angel with kazoos and triangles, right. and I want to hear that, so please do it and send it to us at studio at mintpotion.com and we can, can play with it <laughs> or show it off. And uh, oh, I'd love to do live remixing on this segment. I That'd be so to, much fun. I would love to, uh, yeah, I would love to do a live remix of a kazoo track. <laughs> so here I just edited the info text for this track. Mm -hmm. Um which is super useful when my mouse reappears. So now instead of having the track title bar as a generic thing, mm -hmm. I have notes for the mono track. And so if somebody opens up this project later on and says, what the heck is this you know, stupid track that has nothing in it for? This is what it's for. And inside of that, actually, I have a, a plugin from uh, max for live which we can get into way later. This is Terms by mono um, And it's kind of like a hub for, I guess, launch is the name of the plugin but it's it's kind of like a grid controller like apc style or uh, i don't know livid controller or something that you can launch clips in nice. session view it's like very nice. useful um so we have a request from ac3 what's up who AC? would like to check out the piano roll and get a little bit of a tour of oh, how the perfect. piano roll works in live cool so i happen to have our, our groove construction here too i happen to have a piano right here that's ready to roll um in the top right, you'll notice this flickering uh, square, which is a grip of keys. Um, you can activate that by clicking it. I press Shift, Command, K, or Control, K. Mm -hmm. And what that will do is give me a MIDI keyboard. Once that's activated, and I have a piano-ish type sound, today we're going to be using the Arturia Whirly V2, which I just like. Um, you don't need to look at it. You could just pretend it it looks fine they want to look at it they want to look at it <laughs> so let me um get that guy up there somewhere desktop one 
Where did it go? Never Maybe mind. It's over here. Yeah, that's the thing. It's split across a couple of screens. It's kind of, you know, kind of a hassle. They can hear it. That should be good enough. Yeah. Well, that's why. That's why I got this thing, so you mm -hmm. can hear it, because I'm like a huge Wurlitzer guy. I love the sounds. That kind of gritty, like, you know, electric piano. It's actually a bunch of tuning forks inside of a box with pickups above them. Cool. Um. So you can use the keys. Uh, in the middle row, mm -hmm. um, as like the C scale, on the bottom row of the keyboard, like I don't know if anyone's used GarageBand, it's a very similar um, thing. So you can press. Oh, and let's do this. If you look down here on the bottom next to this arrow, there is a little console notification, and so we can see. If I press Z, I can go down oh, octaves, yeah. and if I press X, I can go up octaves. So. Cool. That's very useful. So Z and X function as octave switchers. Yeah. A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, that whole thing is basically a C to C. And then I imagine the QWERTY row is going to be the black keys. Yeah. So they will, and they will be in the space of normal accidentals. So you have A, W, S, E, D, which actually represent the same notes that are in this icon. So C all the way up to E um, chromatically. So when you press R, like I have a key set up so that it'll record because it's kind of conveniently in the nice. middle. <laughs> um, all right, and those are all of our keyboard keyboard style keys. Now C will lower the velocity, and it mm -hmm. says computer keyboard. You are currently playing with the velocity forty, and every time I press V, it'll go up, much in the same fashion as our octave adjustments. Um, and I believe those are all of the keyboard controls. Um, I'm playing with mine too here. It's a lot of fun. Um, you can't so yeah. hear mine. <laughs> but, and you hit the keyboards, you can really play chords with them and everything. Yeah, too. no, it's way fun. It's great for if you don't have a MIDI controller. Um, that is a keyboard shape or whatever. It's a really great entry point. Um, actually, how I got started in GarageBand, they had software keys. I'm like, well, of course. And that's kind of what's up. So let's talk about, we have a request of the piano roll. And let's talk about how we make MIDI clips. Because that seems like, you know, the first thing that you need in Ableton to work with a piano roll yeah. is a MIDI clip. So I can insert a MIDI clip by right clicking and pressing that button. I can double click by default to make a MIDI clip mm -hmm. and I can have that area selected and have and press shift command or control and M and sh that keyboard shortcut is probably the most convenient way because if I'm in the track view if I'm in the arrangement view as it is called um, well, I'll notice something very interesting first that this section right here this button if we ask our little homeboy will say go back to the arrangement mode. So Ableton will keep track of the position of your song in two ways. One way is, oh, which MIDI clip is playing? Oh, okay, cool. And so it says, all right, this is a one bar clip and how many times it's played and how many beats are in that section. So if I were to change the length of this guy to like, let's say eight, now I have a 32 beat clip and this is the point at which it's playing. And that's useful. But that isn't really reflected in our timeline. Like, yes, there is a period, but, you know, as far as our little follow guy is going, as far as our, our playhead marker is going, I can't really tell that there's any music coming through here. So let's go over to our session view really quick and talk about let's just, just, this, this dude, this guy, that is the piano roll. All right? Piano roll has all kinds of beautiful little options. Like, if I have a few keys in, or a few notes in, excuse me, like, that's, you know, that's all right. When I click on an area and drag, I can make repeated notes of the bottom right here. You can't really see, but the selected grid size. You can see, however, the distance between these lines changing. And that is the same feature. The grid size can be as large as... Gosh, 32 bars if you wanted to. 
even longer. 512 bars I can have. That's uh, pretty ridiculous. Or we can divide back into a measure, which would be this length, or a half of a measure, or a quarter, or an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second note, and so on. And I'm changing the size of the grid by pressing Control or Command, 1 and 2. Nice. Uh, uh, 2 makes the grid larger, 1 makes it smaller. Um, another way to make those adjustments to the grid size is here. We have all of these. If I right-click, I can say, oh, well, you know what? I want a larger grid, or I want like an adaptive kind of space. Nice. I actually used to work with adaptive a lot until I started to use the keyboard shortcuts because... That meant, like, whatever level of detail I was looking at these notes, they would kind of stay there. And by that, adaptive, they mean uh, if, I, if I'm above the piano roll's timeline, I can see a little magnifying glass. And if I drag it in, the grid will keep resizing to adapt mm. to the detail that we want. So the narrow is kind of intense because I'm not going to do a 128th note. So maybe, like, medium, 32nd note. That's pretty good. So as I zoom back out, here I have 16th notes, right? Away a little bit each time we zoom. Quarter and, the, and that's even way the useful. the zoom function is really intuitive in Ableton. Yeah. You grab it right above or to the side, right? Yeah. So we can actually grab the side here nice. and scale the piano roll. So now I can see every octave that this MIDI channel can output. Mm -hmm. Or I can zoom in and look at these notes in very, very big detail to look at the very specific, like, oh, D sharp at octave one. Now, you'll see that my cursor is a pencil. Um, maybe I don't want to edit with a pencil. It can be kind of a pain in the butt to get just that amount of detail in. There are a couple of things we can do with it that are super neat. For example, if I have my last note created, if I press Command D, I can duplicate that note according, oh, cool. to, grid, according to grid space. Um, if I'm very useful for laying down like a drum pattern. Oh, or absolutely. A, drum pattern, a kick drum or something. Right? And knowing like the piano roll like adjustments are super useful. Yeah. So using the arrow keys, I can move around that note depending on the grid size. Mm -hmm. um, let's say I put fold on and I had like everything inside of a specific scale. Mm. Then I can instantly jump to the correct interval. Oh, That's pretty cool. That is really cool. Um, I can select notes um, like in that row by holding option or mm -hmm. alt on the windows platform Sweet. and so that will kind of go through and adjust those things if i press shift i can change the length of mm -hmm. a note um so i can go okay that needs to be longer sure and this is using the arrow keys to make those adjustments i can also do a finer adjustment like if i do shift alt i can start to select more keys ah it starts to get pretty crazy yeah like this is stuff that this is stuff that you can't get on youtube <laughs> probably can um, <laughs> but this is all based off of right here, the brush mode or the draw mode switch. And so you can see, um, inside of these hard brackets on the left, mm -hmm. um, that the B key enables and disables draw mode. We can actually change the keys for a lot of our tools, but we'll get into that later. Yeah, let's, that's, not, that's let's like, not go down that route. Let's not go down that route. Um, <coughs> so we've looked at this. Now, this is in the session view. Yeah. And something very important about the session view is, is that, to me, it's distinguished as chunks okay. of sound, right? Like, if we look at the screen here, right right up there in, uh, you know, in the sunshine region here, right. we've got... <laughs> um, you can see there's a grayed out area and there's that two bar kind of section. Now that is actually a looping section, correct? Yes. And so if we tell it to loop right there on the left, we have under, under notes actually, that will be a looping section. And if not, the triangles underneath that sort of gray loop bar, mm. those are the start and finish, correct? Right. So if you turn the loop off, then it's only a one bar clip in right. this case. And we haven't put anything in here, but uh, this is really specific to Ableton into session view in particular, right? Absolutely. This is like I'm creating a hi-hat loop, and I want that layer to come in when I trigger it in the mix, right? Yes. So let's, um, let's do one more thing in terms of just like making noise, right? Yeah. So I disabled the brush mode, mm -hmm. and that makes it easier to select notes. 
Um, but you have to double click to create a note in this case. Mm -hmm. And also we are way the heck down here. So let's do another trick. If I, if I have a note selected, so we are at B at zero. If I press shift and up, I can jump an entire Whoa. octave, which is super useful when you're trying to fix the tone of some kind of part or maybe add a sub bass or okay. some kind of other number of adjustments. So let's do, I don't know, a couple let's of notes. Do, let's do like a, yeah, like a nice little. Some kind of simple, what is that? I don't know. Let's do, let's do a major seven chord. Sweet. What do you want as the root? Uh, let's see. C major seven. Sweet. So here we have C. Mm -hmm. We have to skip an interval. If the next note in the scale is D, we have to go to our arpeggiations. E. G happens to be in the right place. That's convenient. Um, and F also happens to be off by an octave or two. Whoa. Do 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 C G. Mm. I'm messing that up. And seventh major seventh. B. Or, okay. Yeah. So. One way that we can like proof our tone, if we're messing around with the piano roll, and let's zoom mm -hmm. out a little bit, since we know what notes we want, we can kind of scale that. Mm -hmm. If we click on this little headphone guy, we can preview these tones by clicking on them. Nice. Um, and that's a dominant seven. No, a major seven. All right. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that works for me. Um, we can change so that's very useful for if i'm adding a new note mm -hmm. um or if i want to hear those two on yeah. top of each other that would be the mario coin interval oh um, no i like it leave it you want to do that give me that give me that like what is that that's uh oh it's just an arpeggiation of the e right yeah yeah so i can press notice how when i press space mm -hmm. um to try and play it makes my like this is called a Gosh, what is that? I'm sorry. The navigation pane. I'm sorry. Where's our Where's our helper, buddy? That's gonna be like play button. Idiot. It, it does a, say play button. But I do want to. I, I, there's a in most DAWs that's called something. There, the transport bar. Or whatever. Ha, <laughs> that's called a transport section of your DAW, where you have stop, play, yeah. record. Ableton has a couple of other strange features that are sort of unique to it. Um, for example, this plus sign gives us the ability to add a MIDI overdub to an arrangement. So if we're playing a beat, for example, or even a piano part where we have where we want to have layered um, sounds, hmm. we can add that live, which is pretty neat. We'll probably be doing that. So now, and I kind of want to branch out from sure. the piano roll because we've covered most of it. Um, there are, of course, a few more things we can do, but... There's only one question I have about this, which is that we're looking at it in session view. Is there anything different about how the piano roll acts in a range view um, or whatever it's called? Those differences are kind of diminishing, but you'll notice for, by... That's a range view. You'll notice by the first, the first thing in arrangement view is we have our MIDI note, we have our MIDI like clip that we're working on. Um, if we switch over to session or to arrangement view, it doesn't exist. Even if we go back to the arrangement, there isn't a clip there. Yeah. And that's an issue. If we did all this work in this guy, who sounds beautiful, by the way. Ah, oh, now see, this is this is probably oh. because it's being treated like a triggerable clip. Is that is that correct? It's um, basically a clip that needs to be triggered in this column. Yes, but it's a trick. It's a clip that is managed in the session view yeah. that doesn't really have a home in the arrangement view. So and how so, do we get it over to the arrangement view if we want it? Well, here's, the, here's, here's, here's how I learned how to do it. And there are a couple of ways. We can copy and paste it, mm -hmm. right? So you can go over here, right click, you can copy, or you know, press Command or Control V, and then click over here to our session view. And in any actual MIDI channel, we can paste that. There it is. So that works. But it's also not playing from here. Mm. That's kind of weird. That's because in order to hear what's going on in the arrangement view, we have to follow the arrangement, this button right here, mm -hmm. or return to arrangement view. Um, F10, some crazy person has arranged. <laughs> I actually set up a key. Um, I set up a key for this. I use little f. By the way, when you set up keyboard shortcuts, capital and lowercase letters count. So if I press F, it'll go to arrangement view. 
or back to our arrangement. And now, oh, maybe it wasn't even in the right spot. Hey, there it is. And so now when I click on that, it will show back up in our other piano roll. And the piano roll behaves really similarly in, in either mode. So right. it's really just the way you're uh, arranging that. Now, um, one thing that the session view does, though, that's really weird or different, I guess, in comparison, mm -hmm. is we can do other things with this channel. We can modulate different oh, yeah. programs, uh, different program changes, just like here. We have an envelopes view, so let me just mm -hmm. like unscrew that real quick. There are a couple of things that are kind of hidden down here in the bottom left. We have our launch type. Mm -hmm. We have our note adjustments, and this is cool where we do most of our work. Like, yeah. oh, maybe I want this guy to loop. Okay, cool. So I have this. Let's make a quick adjustment. Um, duplicate. All right. And um, now when I play this guy, we get a loop. Um, the looping point starts here, right here. We can set that looping point. We can also set the end looping point. And so this is the end looping point, actually. But it doesn't matter because it's outstripped by the length. Well, the that's cool thing the, is... That's the end uh, trigger point. Oh, the end point. trigger point. Okay. So if you go in the other mode, that, that lower ah. one, top ones are looped because it's got a whole bar around it. Okay. And so we can start the beginning of that loop from anywhere, yeah, which is pretty useful, especially if you have like, um, like a rhythm, like a some kind of egg shaker that has like a weird offset rhythm. Oh yeah. If you put that looping point one or two, you know, like you know, like eighth notes or quarter mm -hmm. quarter beats in, you find that you can get a lot more variation because it's not you know straight in line. It's also pretty useful for something with a pickup, huh? Yes. Or you need it to come in uh, with a pickup, but then you want it to loop on the. Right. Board, that kind of thing. That's very, very useful. Um, let's see, what else do we got? Oh yeah, we could we could even show how that would, would look. If we drag the top one. This guy? Uh no, the top the top loop triangle, uh -oh. yeah. That bad boy over and then set the Yeah, so this would give you that kind of pickup for a loop, for example. So we can play it pl with the first region. Yeah. And then loop the second region. So there it goes. Absolutely. That's a really good trick for, say, DJing where you want uh, to maybe steal a, a beat or a loop from a song or something, and you want to have that little pickup into it to kind of give you some crossfade, but you don't want to loop that. Pickup. Absolutely. But, um, um, do you want to get into launch modes and envelopes before we close up? We only I have a few minutes good. left. See, Dymo is asking, if I were to load in a song, would it allow me to fiddle around with it to give it a sound I'd want to hear from it? And I oh, think yeah. I think that's a really good question. Uh, I talked a little bit about it in here, but Ableton's audio processing is super impressive. It's kind oh, of the main, main thing that draws people to the software that distinguishes it from other just, you know, DAW you know, software. It's not a simple sequence or anything like that, oh, right? No. So here's a loop that I made uh, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, let's turn that guy off. And so the first thing that it allows to do is quantize these maybe stabs when I figure out like, okay, is that on the one? And so the first thing that's happening is this type of, you know, stretching. Yeah. So the default setting, I believe, is beats. But we can go down to complex, and it'll try and preserve the transients and the tone of it, of this track. If I'm playing a pre-recorded, fully mastered track, would yes. you say complex or complex pro is the way to go? Um, That's a good question. I would say that probably complex <laughs> is the way to go by default. Mm -hmm. Pro has basically more of an adjustment of how long do I hit Mm. And how many of the formats do I want? We can get into the actual details of formats and envelopes nice. in a second, but I really wouldn't go if you're just trying to keep the 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 spirit of that song intact as much as possible. Complex. Yeah, complex is the way to go. Obviously, nice. the more that you distort the sample rate, which is exactly what this is doing, by playing it even faster or more slowly, or trying to line things up. There are a couple of strange things that happen 
with clipping and, you know, really just breaking the tone down. But because of that, we can use f fast Fourier transforms and repitch it. We can do microtonal adjustments. Nice. We can change. Maybe I just want each of these hits to land. Like, I really like to do beats, transients. And then instead of trying to, what this represents is jump to the next transient, play forward, or try and blend from transient to transient. And so if I go from forward and I play like only 27%, we get this really cool effect mm -hmm. of each of these notes kind of becoming more of a hit oh, than yeah. having tone throughout, you know, where all of that wave information is. It's scrunching the time between transients. And you can also take chunks of these. And uh, actually, um, Jake taught me a trick about essentially using the, uh, the not session view, the arrangement view, and... You can then sort of apply this process to instead of a whole chunk, an individual chunk of that. So yeah. you could do multiple instances of something in the arrangement view. Right. All right. We can take our audio clip um, in this channel. Yeah. I can zoom into it super, super tight. Let's make sure that I'm back on this guy. And like, let's say you want to take one hit and turn it into a whole, right. like, elaborate thing, right? I mean, I would split it. Mm -hmm. Or I would copy and paste it. Yeah. Um, what I usually do is press Command E to split. I just know that keyboard shortcut. Pretty useful. Um, and we can reverse it, and we can stretch it, and do all kinds of things. We can right click and isolate, or I think Command J mm -hmm. will crop the cl crop the clip. Um, notice that it has. Oh, actually, that's fine. So this weird little hit. Yeah. If I change, you know, so that can become an instrument very quickly. Like I can throw that into a sampler. If I want to, I can do a whole ton of stuff. I can't wait to show you guys all this stuff. But, you know, thank you for, you know, we're, we're actually out of time. Did you know yeah, that? we're about to move on I can't to believe Rockstar it. Academy. This flew right the heck by. I had so much fun. So. Um, I hope you guys got a little bit of something out of that. Um, but we have a lot to go into. We left off with a piano roll. We're going into some sound design stuff. Um, but I think... Next week, we'll kind of go back. I want to talk one more thing about how Session View works mm -hmm. and really that DJ element where we yeah. have envelopes and we have our launch modes that we can use to go kind of play yeah. um, our Session View just like we would kind of like a weird, like a Rube Goldberg device almost. Like you could do some yeah. crazy stuff. <laughs> no, I mean, if you consider each one, Session View is built on the idea that each one of these columns is triggerable and then you layer them based on basically horizontal view and I mean you can have way more tracks that's why you get these you know 8 by 8 or 16 I mean you can you can stuff an entire yeah. you can stuff an entire Ableton project into one of these tabs yeah um, we can take all of these items and group them mm -hmm. we can take that group and save it into our library like we can do a lot of crazy stuff we're not even touching the surface of what this tool can do um, but session view is going to Session View is going to be our life, I think, for a couple of weeks here on a little help. Also, please send your questions to us. I mean, studio at mimpotion.com. We got plenty of, I don't know, subject, maybe a little help. And then with what? I and mean, we can kind of go over what those things are <coughs> in upcoming episodes. But stick around just a minute, and we will get you into the Rockstar Academy with Sam Lustig. All right. Thanks for joining us for a little help today.